Welcome back to another episode of Densa Depot. Today we are going to set up the rear axle on our project Cummins truck and I'm going to go over some very, very important aspects of setting up a rear that lots of people don't really ever go over. We're going to talk pinion angle, we're going to talk how to set up your track bars, we're going to talk shocks and welding those brackets on, and all those key aspects that are so critical to making a truck run right. So stay tuned, this is going to be a very technical video with a little bit of welding. I hope you enjoy, sit back and relax, and let's get to it. Okay, before we get into the explanation of how we're going to put this rear together and set it up, it's already in the truck, obviously. Let's go over what our project truck is today. It's a 79 F350. It has been Dana 80 swapped in the rear. It has an NV5600 transmission, as you can see, and obviously it has a 12-valve Cummins engine in it. It's been lifted in the front with Skyjacker springs. It's a four inch lift. And in the rear, it's slightly more than four inches with Super Duty Skyjacker springs off a 2020 or Skyjacker springs that are for the latest model Super Duty truck. So let's get into what we're actually gonna do on this truck here today. Here is our axle that we're gonna be setting up. We're gonna be doing the following. We're gonna be welding on the perches. We're gonna be welding on the track bar brackets. And we're also gonna be welding on the shock brackets. Now, before any of this can be done, it is very important that you do all the measurements that you need to get your truck set up right. So let's take a look at what those measurements are. Getting the correct measurements for your driveline angle starts at the moment you start to drop in your engine. This is significantly more difficult when you're doing a resto mod like this particular truck is. What we're gonna look at today to start is the pinion angle and it starts with setting up the engine correctly. We need our angles to be equal, opposite, and parallel. And then later on we will discuss offset critical speed and phasing to get all of our measurements correct. Now to start, your engine needs to be set at the correct angle. I like to set the engine in a little bit greater than three degrees and then go back from there by making uh, pinion angle shims to put on the transmission mount. We have this engine now set at a final angle of 3.7, which is slightly greater than what I would like to see. I'd like it to see to be more around three but due to limitations in the real world, 3.7 was the best I could get. Let's go under the truck and take a look why. Okay, now that we are under the truck, you can see where limitations in the real world can come into play. We have multiple limitations. First of all, the top of the transmission is barely almost hitting the cab, so that's as high as it can go. The transfer case at the top, you can see right here, I actually had to cut part of the casting off so that would not hit the cab. I could have also mashed the cab up with a hammer to make it fit, but I just cut that little bit of casting off the transfer case. And then down here, you can see I had to hack off a little bit of, again, the cab ribbing to get it to fit. So in the real world, the best angle that I could achieve with this particular setup was 3.7 degrees. Now, is this going to be an issue? No, I think 3.7 degrees will be sufficient. So let's take a look at how we want to measure the rest of our angles. When setting up your driveline angles, it's very important that you achieve the following things, equal, opposite, and parallel. Now, I do want to discuss one thing. This is a street truck. It's not an extreme off-road truck. It's not a Formula One car. It's not a quarter mile race car. It's not a show car that just sits and never actually gets driven. So those scenarios are different for those particular vehicles because you're trying to achieve a a race manner or it's only for looks or whatever. I am talking about a vehicle that is gonna be driven 100,000 miles and you're looking for well over 5,000 hours of U-joint life. So this is a standard street truck scenario with a little bit of lift. Okay, our three major angles that we need to consider uh, surrounds being equal, opposite, and parallel. Equal is easy to understand. Both of the angles need to be the same. So I'm just gonna be using three degrees as an example. We know our truck is at, uh, it's actually at 3.5 if you measure at the back of the transfer case. So at the back of our transfer case, or just transmission if it's two wheel drive, we are gonna say that we have three degrees right here, okay? So if that's three degrees, then the angle at the output of the yoke or input on the yoke also needs to be three degrees it needs to match. Now, which way do they need to go? Well. That brings us to the next step. We have achieved equal, they're both three degrees. So now we need to get to opposite. Opposite means that they are facing opposite directions. And this can be a little confusing because of the way Spicer uh, defines this. 
in this scenario, our driveline angle, everything is going to be down. Myself and a lot of people get confused because it appears that this is facing up here, but it is not. It's facing down, and it is described as being down, and that's how Spicer defines it. So our engine is facing three degrees down. Our drive shaft is also going to be facing down. We will discuss that later. Our rear axle, it is defined as three degrees down. If you look at the back of the axle, it looks like it's facing up, but it's defined as being down. So think of it as looking at the back of the axle on the cover plate, it's facing down towards the ground. Okay, so our angles are now opposite. They're defined as both down. This one is facing that way, and this one is facing that way. And that brings us to parallel, okay? So they're equal, opposite, and parallel, the same number, they're opposite to each other, as in the direction that they're facing, and they're in line, okay? That is going to give you the greatest opportunity to not have a driveline vibration. So now let's go under the truck and see what that looks like for our project Cummins here. Okay, so the first measure we're gonna take is the output shaft of the transfer case. And you can see we have 3.5 degrees. Now we need to go to the axle and we want to measure the axle. You can put it on the pinion or wherever you want to put it. It's a little, the pinion's not perfectly flat right there because I hit it with a hammer a few times. So we're going to measure it right here and you can see we're at 3.4 degrees. So there we go, 3.5, 3.4 to 3.5. So that is what you want to achieve first with your angles is that they are equal, opposite, and parallel. Now let's put the drive shaft in for the next part. Okay, what I've done next is I cut a piece of wood to help me get very close to determining what my drive shaft angle is going to be. What Spicer recommends is a slope no greater than seven degrees. We have a slope of 10.8. So immediately you would think that you have an issue, but that is actually not the case. Spicer is very conservative with their numbers. If you go onto Tom Wood's website, he makes it very clear that 15 degrees, up to 15 degrees with a single piece non-double card and drive shaft is more than acceptable, especially given that you're running bigger yokes. We're gonna be doing 1410s with this particular truck. But that brings us to the next two things we need to consider, and that is offset and critical speed of the drive shaft. When talking about a drive shaft being offset, we are talking about it being farther to one side than the other in comparison to the front of the transmission. Now. There's one major reason why this would happen in a factory vehicle, and that is because the engine is typically offset on most vehicles to the passenger side, and therefore the drive shaft is also naturally offset. But another reason why you'd want the drive shaft offset is because it'll allow the U-joints to have their maximum motion or their full range of motion. By giving the U-joint its full range of motion, it'll increase the life on it. So we want to have it slightly offset in a regular passenger vehicle application. Now I can calculate my drive shaft's operating angles because I have all three measurements. 3.5 on the output of the transfer case, 3.5 for the input on the rear axle. My slope of my drive shaft is 10.8. Because they are all facing down, all I need to do is take 10.8 and subtract 3.5 and that'll give me my operating angle of 7.3 for both sides, both of them being 7.3. Now, that operating angle would technically be out of Spicer's operating limits, but think about it like this. 3.5 here and 3.5 here means that the drive shaft is operating at the same velocity. Although this angle is greater than what Spicer recommends it is well within what the U-joints can actually tolerate in the real world. Next we need to talk about critical speed and phasing. Phasing is simple, it just means that the drive shaft yokes are put in the same spot on each side that one is an offset from the other. If you're getting your drive shaft built it's going to be assembled correctly for you hopefully but it's just something you want to double check. Critical speed is a more important calculation that takes a little bit more to understand. So let me erase my board and then we'll take a look at it. I called up Tom Woods and discussed all my measurements and they agree with everything. He said, yep, that seems reasonable and good to us. Although a five inch aluminum drive shaft would work, they're recommending that a 3.5 uh, thick wall steel would be sufficient. Or I could go with a four inch steel that would definitely be good enough. So I have to think about that. I'm probably gonna end up going with the four inch steel per their recommendation. 
Um, and I meant to mention this earlier in the video, but before you order or do anything, definitely call up Tom Woods and or Mike Williams and get their opinion on everything. They are the true masters of drive shafts and angles. I'm now ready to tack weld these into place before I pull them off the truck to be finish welded. One thing I want to do first really quick is just do one final double check, measuring from the inner portion of the outer flange to my perch. I'm just making sure that both sides are at the exact same um, measurement. That is good. I know my final pinion angle is good, so now I'm ready to tack weld the perches on, and we'll get this ready to be pulled out here and go on to the next step. Okay, so I have my perches just tacked into place really quick. They'll be properly welded once the axle is pulled out and done. One thing I want to say is before you order a drive shaft and weld everything into place, Tom Woods and Mark Williams are definitely your best resources for understanding driveline angles. So if you have any questions, I would reach out to them. Both of those companies are very helpful and I, would, I always order drive shafts from them. That's the way to go. If you like this episode, please like and subscribe. I went a little bit over time, so I'm gonna do the shocks and the track bars in the next episode. But if you enjoyed this one, I hope you like and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next episode.